Hello, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of the Mr. Congrat channel. Um, today we'll be talking about the topic of the Somali pirates, which happened a while back, but it's still interesting and relevant, and I want to talk about that, so let's jump in. Now, to truly understand the situation of the Somalian pirates, you have to project yourself back to the year of 1991. Where were you back then? Well, regardless of where you were, um, in the country of Somalia, the Somalians relied on the coast, which was beautiful and prosperous, to get fish as a way of profit and also food, because Somalia was a dirt poor country back in 1991, as it is today currently. Now, the only reason the fish population was so good was because, one, the Somalians did not have the adequate technology to be able to go and pillage the fish population, and two, the Somalian government enforced the Somalian navy, which prevented other foreigners from going in and taking their fish. That's not good. Now, the government was incredibly paranoid of the fact that uh, foreigners could just go in and take their fish because foreigners were bigger and scarier than little tiny, than, than little tiny Somalians with dirt poor stuff who could barely buy anything. But then, tragedy struck. Uh, in, the, in the 1990s uh, and continuing on to today, the Somalian civil war started and with that brought a host of problems to the already dirt poor Somalian government. And so as a way to cope with the war, they started to pull in reinforcements from the Somalian Navy back to the Somalian Army so they could fight in the war. Now, that left a massive gap in the coast. And so foreigners did not have any incentive not to go and pillage the coast. And so that's what they did. They went on the coast and they started pillaging all the fish, oil rigs. And because the Somalians were dirt poor, they could not compete with them. Local farmers could not compete with them. Now, the Somalians were understandably outraged, and as the year approached 1995, they started to think about partaking in some epic radical action. In the middle years of 1995, some Somalians partake in the act of piracy. Now, that was pretty dumb, because uh, their lack of technology versus the abundance of technology of the other foreign countries, well, it, was a massive, it was a massive gap. And so most Somalians knew that it would be a losing battle, and so they smartly did not partake. But some did, and they all got bashed. They all got bashed. None of their plans succeeded, and they were usually sent back to their country and punished. Now, uh, the one reason, the main reason why they did not partake in acts of piracy is that they thought the civil war would be a quick and fast war. They were wrong. Ten years later, in 2005, the war was still going strong as ever, technology from the foreigners had improved, and they were pillaging more fish, and the country was getting poorer, because they were pillaging all the fish. How are you going to get rich if you can't take the fish? And so, in 2005, they struck for the first time, attacking a Hong Kong ship called the MV Feisty Gas. Jesus Christ, what type of name is that? Um... They ransomed it for approximately three, $315,000. Now, this freaked out the company which owned the vessel as there were approximately 120 Hong Kongs inside of the ship. And so they, on an unknown day, they paid the ransom and the ship was allowed to let go free. Now, after tasting that first, that first bit of um, victory, the Somalians wanted more. And so over the few, next few years, they would go on a raid of pillaging, which costed the government so much money. <laughs> now, after their 2005 attack on the MS Feisty Gas, Jesus Christ, um, they started to develop an MO which they would use for the following years to come. Their MOs usually started like this. I will make a visual representation of it. What we have through here is the um, visual representation of the three types of Somalian pirates. Now, Somalian pirates are usually uh, young men who have previously fought in the Somalian war or just citizens who want to do something. Firstly, the first type, there are three types uh, of Somalian pirate categories, is the ex-militant. Um, this ex-militant is usually a person who has already fought in the Somalian civil war um, and is usually the brain, the big, big muscles of the operation using their fancy guns and their knowledge of weapons to scare the crap out of big boat users. Here we have the local fisherman. The local fisherman uses his local knowledge of the seas and his prediction of whether to be able to make basically the trip go more smoothly. 
and here we have the tech man. The tech man uses devices such as GPS to be able to track the location more easily and other technological things which I am too dumb to understand and talk about. Uh, right here is a staged event. Um, basically their methodology using boats is that there'll be a big boat, this, this one, this one right here, um, um, and two smaller skiffs which are smaller boats. They usually contain uh, three members or more on each boat and they would attack. The big boat would show off its weapons and intimidate the target boat, which is my bed. Um, and while they're distracting the target boat with all their fancy weapons, the two smaller skiffs would go and attack the main base and hold this ship for ransom. Now that may sound badass, but uh, usually the pirates don't even have enough money to supply the big boat, so this is out of the question. <sighs> um, and so there are just two smaller skiffs, and um, even though ex-militant and tech dudes sound really cool, in reality ex-militants are just part of the Somalian army, um, they're ex-militiamen who lost to a bunch of ragtag rebels and had barely sufficient training because Somalia is a dirt poor country. And tech dudes, um, tech dudes are basically people who just read a bunch of high school books and said, Herb the dirt, I know tech. And so, uh, people with that poor experience don't really put up a threat. And so, whenever uh, a ship gets attacked, attacked, this usually happens. to assume that the pirates did not do well in their operations to attack the target ships, which is usually what happened. Though the late 2000s were the period in which uh, the most pirates attacked happened, um, they were usually blasted by the target ship. Good, you had a laugh. Fine, good. Um, and so, uh, in 2009, it was when the attacks most frequently occurred, and Apart from just attacking, they're actually spreading their territory. Now they decide to spread their ter territory into the Indian Oceans, as though because um, the attacks mostly ended in failure. When they succeeded, the government had to pay a tremendous amount of money, usually more than one million dollars. So the expansions freaked out. The new Puntland region started to uh, enforce more security in the year 2010 and it, and it reported that piracy acts had gone down because they, suf because they actually put more support boats surrounding the ships most likely to be targeted. Um, the Chinese Liberation uh, Army, Navy, whatever, it's really long, I cannot remember, also started to put people in to stop piracy near Somalia, which is actually the first time they've actually used their navy outside of their international waters. Following the uh, many government policies to basically crack down on uh, piracy in the late 2010s, um, the Somalian pirates say, hey, maybe this isn't a good idea after all. Though uh, the prospect of $1 million per catch is very appetizing to a poor ass country. Um, it's just not worth it, because uh, if they failed, they would lose more ships, more people. And also, the people who did survive had a very large fear of being prosecuted. The overall prosecution rate went up for the Somalian pirates, and so with that, the attacks went down for the Somalian pirates. And so, uh, the government restrictions were actually starting to take a good hold on the pirates, and they were actually starting to stop. In 2013, after three years of heavy smacking on crack on piracy, um, the UA announced an official report that only nine attacks were documented, with none being successful. It appeared that the very real fear of being prosecuted and uh, potentially set to life or death 
in prison. Um, combined with the very low success rate, the not worth it of $1 million, and also the increasing technology and ferocity of the foreign countries, uh, made the Somalians say, hey, this isn't a good idea, let's quit. I said that's exactly what happened, they started quitting. Uh, in uh, late 2013, the tax basically ceased to exist. But in 2017, and, a, and another another successful attack since 2012 was carried out on another ship, but it was released after they discovered that the ship's owner was a Somalian. Hell yeah! And just like that, a decades-long struggle with the pirates had come to an anticlimactic end, with government forcing restrictions, uh, citizens fighting for survival, and villains that faded with time. It was a very anticlimactic story and ending. But let's be honest here, no one won. No one won in this case. No fishermen won because the foreigners came in to take their ships. The government didn't win because they lost nearly $7 billion fighting off the pirates, according to costs that I manually uh, wrote out. Um, and the heavy and the heavy loss of tourism because tourism industries were affected because remember the Somalians didn't just go after fishing ships they went for any ship because all ships could be held for ransom and the tourist ships were most popular because they hold a variety of people and have the most variety and has the most potential to be able to wringe some cash out of it and so no one won in this case and I'm gonna leave you on that note. I hope you like this video and uh, can you please subscribe to the channel? Actually, no, that sounds like begging. Uh, subscribe if you like, dislike if you dislike it, like if you like it, comment. Just to not make me feel happier, but just for me to truly understand what you guys want. Okay, this is Kong and I'll retreat back to my closet now. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next vid.